Prophet Sallallahu was affected and in that regarding the hadith Aisha radiallaha reported a man known as Labid al Asam uh, from the tribe of uh, Banu Zureh performed a sihir like any magic on whom on Allah's messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam till Allah's messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started uh, any imagining that he had done something uh, actually he did not uh, do it one day one night he was with me means with Aisha radiallaha and he invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a long time yani he was making dua dua he was doing such a long dua so what happened after that long period then said oh Aisha do you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed me concerning the matter I was asked yani she asked what is it you know so two men came to me to who to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa two men came one of them sat near my head the other near my feet and one of them said uh, to the uh, companion what is the disease of this man so two men came and they are talking and they are treating who prophet sallallahu so the other person replied he is under the effect of sihir mashur so try to understand these two angels came to cure the black magic because prophet sallallahu was affected mashur the first one asked who did it the other replied labid ibn al asam the first one asked what material did he used the other replied a comb and the hair stuck to it and the pollen of a male date palm means one of the servant of prophet sallallahu she gave those hair the first one asked what is it the other replied it is in the well of darwan they took the hair from the comb of prophet Islam, and using that hair they put in the well called darwan so allah's messenger Islam, along with some of his companion went there and uh, returned saying oh aisha the color of its water is like the infusion of henna leaves have you ever seen the henna how it will be orange red so prophet sallallahu himself saw that water color was just like the henna water a uh, reddish color which water we are talking about the water of the well so he went along with the some of his companion went and there returned saying this is the color of the water to whom he is saying to aisha one of the wife of prophet sallallahu the tops of the date palm trees near it are like that the heads of the devils like you know top part is like uh, the how the um, heads of the devils will be the top part is that way the heads of the devils so i ask allah's messenger sallallahu why don't you show to the people he said since allah has cured me i would not like uh, to spread the evil among the people then he ordered that the well be filled with the earth means with the lot of soil and fill with the earth so this is the thing happened to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sihir was done by a person who was a jewish person and because of that he has forgetfulness but forgetfulness in regarding will see that he was forgetting like he went to some wife he didn't but regarding the wahi revelation it was completely safe secure and the way it was revealed and they the way it was uh, like uh, 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 intact there was no change in it so try to understand that and what we learn from this hadith sihir magic can be done to anyone when it was done on prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what about the other people it can be right and the thing we learn from this they use the comb and the hair like you know when we comb our hair the uh, it has uh, like you know that comb will have some hair and who can do this thing only the person who is very close to you they can access it isn't it the servant she access it and she gave to that person labid and he did the sihir he did the magic so this is our belief as a muslim we believe magic is done and there are certain verses they recite it which will affect 
I give you example. For example, I appreciate somebody. Does it feel good about it? Isn't it? If I say something mean or bad, does it affect them? Yes, it is. The same way the effect of sihir, the effect of magic are there. Inshallah, in upcoming classes, we're going to learn that. So the meaning of the hadith, what we learn, refers to the sihir that was done to Prophet Wasallam. Jewish hire that Labid ibn al-Asam, one of the most skilled sorcerer. At that time, he was one of the most skilled sorcerer to perform the sihir on Prophet Wasallam in return for just three dinar. Can you imagine just for the three dinar he did that? To begin his work, it is believed that Labid obtained tufts of the Prophet ﷺ, means hair from a young female servant who used to go to the Prophet ﷺ home. He tied the hair to a knot using the spell on it and dropped it in the well. Like you know, they did the magic on those hair and they dropped in the well. And after that, what we learn, Prophet Wasallam, like who can access, like for, uh, just imagine for anyone, who can access, who is very close to you, who comes to your home every day and uh, tied the hairs to the knot and using his spell on it and dropped in a bell. So according to different uh, narrations of the hadith, it appears that this seher belongs to the category causing like you know sexual inability as a result prophet ﷺ would imagine himself capable of doing uh, you know like go going close to any one of the wife and he was not able to have the intimacy but when he approached her he couldn't you know so nevertheless this type of sihir did not affect his brain try to understand uh, or his behavior but was only confined to the you know uh, a relation between husband and wife that that is the only thing affected in this so right right now also if somebody is affected by that this is one of the sign they they come close to the husband or husband comes close to wife wife comes close to husband but they don't have intimacy so here in upcoming uh, uh, classes we learn like you know you have to recite ayatul kursi and mawazatain and mawazat three whole surahs and that's the surahs which was revealed suratul nas and suratul falak and total it will be 11 ayahs you can recite it 11 times seven times nine times so depending person to person but you should your belief should be completely tawakkul on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so uh, here we learn like you know according uh, to some of the um, scholars they say this 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 is the thing happened to prophet sallallahu it can happen to anyone so we should have completely tawakkul on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should ask allah to cure it so sihir did not affect his reasoning yani but only his perception so prophet sallallahu imagined doing things such as you know uh, going close to the wife and those are the things other than that it doesn't affect his brain or regarding the wahi I am talking about. And uh, here we learn uh, certain hadith. Abu Huraira reported Prophet Wasallam avoid seven serious sins. Asa mobiqat. People ask what are they? The Prophet Wasallam replied shirk. Shirk means polytheism. Adding uh, anyone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is only one. And Prophet Muhammad Wasallam is Allah's messenger. Shirk is adding any deity. So he would say uh, among the seven major sins, avoid shirk. Second is sihir, sorcery. Whether you are doing black magic, white magic, it's a magic. And it, that is forbidden. Unlawful killing of a person. You can't kill anyone without any just reason. And you can't take law in your hand. Living on money of usury means uh, uh, what you called interest. Many people they think, oh, this country, it's okay to take interest. There is no okay. If you are engrossed in interest, come out of it. Do toba. This also we should avoid it. 
and you know taking the money of orphan and eating up means uh, as a caretaker you are taking uh, the taking care of uh, orphan but instead of giving them you are eating yourself that is also forbidden and uh, you know when you are fighting for the cause of allah and you are running away from the war that is also a sin and accusing innocent women here it is mentioned innocent married women for the fornication but if you see in the larger scale these fornication even for the men these days they fornicate and they use the uh, such a words to accuse men also but here in the literal sense it is mentioned in this hadith accusing married women for the fornication so we should avoid this uh, thing you know the whole surah has been revealed for the fornication for uh, like uh, 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 accusation on somebody the whole surah surah to noor and accusing innocent women that is a major sin so one should avoid all the major sins that is not doing the shirk not doing the sorcery unlawful killing of a person and eating the riba interest and eating the wealth of a orphan running away from the war accusing innocent married women so on the basis of the above hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam like you know warn sihr must be avoided as it is one of the uh, most serious sins this is a proof that it exists so ibn abbas reported that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a person who has acquired knowledge of the sciences of astrology like this is talking about sihr one should not do that you know it is uh, as if uh, you you are um, gaining a sinful thing so learning uh, sihr is forbidden so muslim may shun it and you know this is the evidence that sihr is a uh, thing which we shouldn't learn it so it's clear from the above uh, verse and hadith sihr shouldn't be learned and practice it we should avoid and views of uh, scholars regarding that so according to uh, abu uh, like uh, qattab some people denied the existence of sihr but sihr is reality upon which arabs persians different communities romans indians they they believe so it is the you know it is part of our belief we believe that sihr could happen to anyone it happened to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so it can happen to any one of us so it means what we should do we should recite ayatul kursi and mawazatain and our aqeeda should be correct our uh, belief should be completely on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you should be righteous righteous in sense believing in one allah and uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you should be regular in your prayers you should avoid all the sinful acts so here what uh, umar khattab is saying uh, is that uh, like you know allah says teaching the people sorcery which is in surah al-baqarah ayah number 102 which is forbidden because they teach magic harut and marut and they say babylonian uh, people like uh, this is a sinful act and this kind of sihr will separate husband and wife and it is forbidden and according that's what umar khattab and he Uh, always was against it, and he would give death sentence those who practice it. And according to Kurtubi, you know, sihir is reality, and uh, one should not practice it. And these are the things uh, which will leads to a sinful ways. One should avoid those things. So sihir is a uh, you know it's a thing which is uh, done. with the help of the shayateen and jinn we are on the chapter 3 categories of the sihr so the, there are eight categories okay how many are there eight categories are there so the first category the category number 1 so what is it that we learn from this the sihr of 
Chaldeans means who used to worship the seven planets. This sihir is what kind of sihir it is? They, yani they are worshiping to whom? They are worshiping to planets. And uh, you know, believing these planets uh, control the world and were behind the forces of good and evil. These people were one to whom the messenger. Ibrahim al Islam was sent. Like you know, at the time of Ibrahim al Islam, that kind of uh, sihir was more like you know, they will find out about the planet, this planet is good, that planet. You might have seen these days also, they will tell you, okay, uh, go this direction, that direction, your home should be this way, that way, this plan, uh, this. Uh, planet is uh, you know is good it this uh, like you know this kind of things so they talk about th those category number two is seher of people who have fantasized like in yani this is like a hallucinations a razi argued and how fantasy may have effect on people for instance a man may be able to walk on the trunk of the tree on a ground surface but cannot do so if trunk is placed alongside a river or a similar place so the common advice of doctors to a person with their nose bleed not to look at the red objects and to possess person but not to look at bright or revolving objects is simply because man soul have been created weak and submissive to fantasies the category number three seeking the assistance of the worldly spirits yani with the spirits uh, the jinn who are two types some jinns are they are nice they are believers and some are disbelievers who are demons shaitan so professionals and experts in this field hold that communicating with this worldly spirits uh, is achieved by simple means such as ruqya reading over the people or objects using words of disbelief polytheism and it's like a smoke kind of thing so this type of sihir is known as al azim so and which is putting spell on somebody on the sihir of tashkir which is using the assistance of jinn in performing act of sihir and these things it is it is forbidden i am not teaching here i am saying what kind they use it and this is forbidden i am just mentioning <coughs> how carefully we should be category number 4 this type includes that the performance of magic and eye catching trickery you know somebody is performing magic and eye trickery it is based on tricking the eye like uh, you know preoccupying it uh, solely with the object viewed a skilled magician can perform a trick that uh, stuns the minds of viewers and catches their eyes leaving them preoccupied with gazing at an object thereby immediately performing another trick and which appears to them other than what they are expecting and are uh, left uh, dumbfounded so if the magician remains silent does not say things which distract the minds of viewers they would be aware of the tricks and he had intended to perform this was the fourth but fifth one is you know that like marvelous objects such as you know geometrically made artwork for example a uh, knight riding on a horseback or holding something in his hand appearing to blow every hour or this type includes the construction uh, of uh, some kind of uh, clock mechanism not to be considered as a part of sihir but actually it is a sihir uh, this one and because it is based on the positive causes and if a man understands science better he will be able to produce more advanced machines these things have uh, become uh, known now following the advance of the technology which has been driving forces behind the invention of number of marvelous objects yani using the technology and doing the certain things and uh, sixth one the use of specific medication 
in food and ointment literally they will be using certain things which they will mix in the food in the ointments yani it will go inside your body or it will be rub on your body you understand that kind of so in the mind there is and you know the effect of such medication as the effect of hypnotism like you know when you swallow those things like you know somebody may put in the food you didn't even know but it will have effect on your body it will go inside your body it will definitely have the effects and somebody may mix in the oil or certain um, things maybe your moisturizer or anything it could be like you know which they can rub on your body and this is done only very close people will do these things they will get from some place and they will have the access in your home they will see to whom you are close anyone can do on anyone what is the cause of doing it jealousy category number 7 the sahir claims that he knows the supreme name of a uh, god and that the jinn obeys his command in many things so if the person listener to the sahir is weak minded and less perceptive then he would believe that what the sahir may tell him in the truth a listener is attached to what he believes is truth so could be easily frightened once fear is instilled his sensory perception is weakened and the sahir would be capable of doing whatever he wishes so he would make the things it would go against allah subhanahu wa taala their beliefs become weak and he shows that jinn is powerful when they have that frightening thing in their heart that is the way they have the perception and category number 8 slandering people is one of the form of sihr which is common among the people this is also a sihr do you ever realize you know when you slander somebody you keep on saying the things which are false you know it but you spread something false you in sense it can be anyone i don't mean you you it can be anyone is spreading a false thing slandering it goes 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 and you know it becomes true for example take the uh, news channel some news channel may spread something which is not correct so it spread on a larger level and everybody thinks it is correct so the same way somebody is spreading the rumors which is incorrect that is also a kind of sihr so type of sihr according to a rabi sihr has several meaning among which are sihr means something a light and subtle to perform sihr on a small like you know small child means to trick him and catch his attention so one is uh, said to perform sihr on a person that he catches his attention like you know doing something which will take the attention and it is easy to be done on the children so this meaning includes what poets label as uh, eye catching sihr because it catches of an eye catching nature a second example of this sihr is expressed in the following way uh, we are people affected by sihr masrurun meaning we are drawn away from the knowledge and third example is sihr expressed in the uh, some you know uh, a kind of uh, effect on on yourself sihir may also refer to magical tricks such as you know performed by a magician to distract the viewer's attention from his actual work through the quick and subtle movement of the hands and sihir refers to the work done by using the assistance of the demons with the intention of getting close to them meaning here referred in the verse which is uh, surah al-baqarah ayah number 102 and sihir means to work of the sorcery communication with the planets and bringing down their spirit so ex- examination and explanation of categories of sihir the categories of sihir by razi raqib and other scholars appears to include sometimes which are 
which is like different types here talking about it which are not really like you know it is based on the literal meaning okay and here uh, like uh, they have included such thing as marvelous invention acts performed by the fast movement of hands slandering and similar acts in their you know just try to understand something unusual something you can't even understand that these categories will be there see here in which you know this is like you know they completely rely on the jinn and shaitan so these are the different views and how the things happens in uh, upcoming chapters inshallah we going to learn how the different uh, kind of how does a sahir bring about jinn inshallah in upcoming class chapter 4 will do in the next class today we did the chapter 3 we learn about the hadith of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam like uh, they perform spell on prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how it was cured by suratul nas and suratul falaq total ayas will be 11 and uh, angels came and they cure it and they remove uh, from the well the hair of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they cure it and he didn't spread this word because he don't want to create any kind of negativity but allah subhanahu wa taala make him role model allah said like sihir magic will be done it can be done on anyone when it was done on prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was very righteous but it was done so what we have to do like be in a state of like uh, you should be uh, in a state of purification means take shower and purify yourself do your uh, salah regularly believing in oneness of allah that is most important thing so may allah guide us all jazakallah khairan kaseera subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa